You cease to be amusing, his brother said. Christopher's voice was higher, wavering, as if his larynx was distorting. I should have killed you long ago. I turned to a squeak. Bullet fast, a black bat dived for Simon's face. Over the pit. Over the stake-lined hole that was to be its death. Sharp claws clashed at Simon's eyes as Andy staggered out, staggered out from the bushes covering his face. He was only feet from the pit. The bat dived for his face again. Simon ducked, but the bat changed to a boy and sent Simon crashing to the ground. They struggled fiercely. Simon tried frantically to roll away from the pit, but that could that could be his own death too, and Christopher unknowingly forced Simon closer. Christopher was strong beyond human t terms, yet so was Simon, and Simon was larger, which gave him more leverage. Yet Christopher lacked the spark of humanity that tempered Simon. He bit, he scratched, he clawed for Simon's throat, and won a throttling grip. You can't kill me, Simon gasped. You have nothing you can kill me with. I can maim you, Christopher growled. I can disable you and leave you helpless while I find the means. He sank his teeth into Simon's forearm and ripped the, the leather-like tissue. He sliced the flesh beneath. Simon screamed more in anger than pain. Damn you. He clutched his brother's throat, but Christopher pried him off. Christopher rolled and flipped Simon over him. Simon's head was over the edge of the pit. A branch bent, leaves rustled. Simon could hear the dirt, dirt trickle beside his ear as Christopher's weight bore down on him. Don't give, he begged the soulless dead bows. He'll know then. He'll tip me over. Simon, Zoe screamed. He had forgotten about her. She stood above them, beating at Christopher with a branch. Christopher laughed in his blighted child's voice, the voice Simon hated so much. The branch broke. Tears ran down Zoe's face. Christopher began choking Simon again, crushing his windpipe. Then another voice. We've got you now, Blondie. Christopher flung himself off Simon. What the hell? He crouched ready to fight or flee. Simon turned and was amazed to see two boys running from the other side of the park, a big one vaguely familiar and a slighter younger kid behind him. They panted a halt in front of Simon. Christopher backed carefully away. Hassling kids now, pervert, said the smaller boy. Simon saw Christopher change his mind about running, a glint of interest in his eyes. The vigor of the two advanced. Kenny wants his jacket back, asshole. The other followed. Yeah, he get it himself, but he's still in the hospital. Simon, furious at his plot's collapse, for Frustrated in his anger, advanced on the boys, eyes blazing. Christopher could get away any time he wanted now. Where would he go? How many more years would it take to find him again? The big one pulled a knife from his belt, a cheap hunting knife, honed to a brittle edge. Simon stopped. He recognized the boy now. The fool. What made him think he could do any better this time? The smell of liquor drifting from him to him answered that question. Hunted him down, had they? Hunted the hunter. The boy thought Simon had stopped from fear. He advanced, waving his knife, and Simon let him. Anger raging inside. The lumbering boy was right before him now, but Simon stood his ground. The boy didn't know what to do. He hadn't anticipated anything other than this. He swung his knife, expecting Simon to duck, but the blade slit neatly across Simon's face. Simon grinned a berserk grin. His fangs slid down from their sheaths. He licked his own blood. The boy stepped back, his mouth open. He looked at the knife and at Simon's face again, as if he couldn't believe what he saw. Then his eyes grew wide, and his tongue bulged like an idiot's. Simon felt his flesh pulling back together, and he knew what the boy saw before the boy turned and ran. Simon whirled to face the other boy, who had crept around him during the confrontation, hoping to surprise him from behind. The boy gasped in horror as he saw the, the curtain of blood down Simon's face, the demonic leer and the writhing flesh curling back into itself. He backed away and a noise came from him like from a wounded beast. Farther back he went. One step more, then his arms were flailing and he was sliding. There was a crash and a scream. He disappeared down into the pit, the hole meant for Christopher. You thought you could fool me with that, Christopher smirked. Simon moved toward him. I almost did, you bastard, he thought. Zoe fumbled with her coat as if burning up. I'll get away, hissed Christopher, but I'll have your your girl first. He dived at Zoe, fangs bared, but something was in her hand, a crucifix. He stopped and snarled, raising his hands. Then he started to shift. Leather wings peeled from his arms. Don't let him go, Simon screamed. She blinked, too afraid to comprehend what he, what, what he meant. Stop him. Christopher's face 
heaved and rippled. His nose turned up, and he began a mocking chitter. Simon couldn't look at Zoe directly. The light coming from her upraised hand hurt his eyes. Yet he ran to her and grabbed the searing cross from her with a cry of pain. He hurled it at the creature that was Christopher as it rose into the air. The ribbon tangled around the bat. The chittering turned to screams. The boy emerged from the bat with the ribbon about his head, the cross strapped to his eyes. There were burns across his face, and he t tore at, at his flesh as if trying to tear out the pain. He opened gouging wounds on his cheeks as he struggled over the grass. He couldn't see where he went. He stumbled blind. He stumbled too far, and he found the pit. He howled. A screeching thud filled the empty air where he sat. He had stood a moment before. Simon flung himself down at the edge of the hole to see. He heard Zoe come up behind him, then moan and move back. Christopher wreathed on two stakes, impaling him. Foul smoke arose from bubble, his bubbling form. His body dying tried remembered his body dying tried to remember shapes to escape, but couldn't quite make the change. A sequence of muddled forms emerged and he twisted on the skewers, spitting blood. Boy with bat's head, woof with boy's arms, pig with boy's face, sloughing skin. And huddled in the corner, miraculously unhurt, the skinny boy whimpered and sucked his hands, too terrified to scream. Simon reached in, hauled him out with one hand, and flung him. He rolled across the grass, got up, and fled. Christopher, or boy, once more twisted into a wizened dwarf, fell in on himself like a crushed insect husk, and finally lay still and mummy-like. Zoe didn't speak. Simon didn't turn to face her. He imagined disgust on her face and didn't want to see it. Leave me, he whispered hoarsely, fighting ice tears. Leave me, Braveheart. I'll come for you. I'll let you know how I am. I must fill this hole, and I must think. He never turned to her. He never heard her leave or noticed the soiled teddy bear lying abandoned on the ground. The emptiness crashed in, and he asked himself the question that he didn't dare at, hadn't dared to ask before. What will I do now?